Welcome to Draw Studio. Today we're going to learn about the muscles of the throat. Let's get started. The throat is made up of a series of muscles and other structures that run along the front of the neck. Learning the structures of the throat will help us understand the form of the neck on the surface and how the muscles will attach. The first of these structures is the hyoid bone. This is a small, U-shaped bone that curves around the throat. It floats in the upper part of the neck, acting as an anchor for many neck muscles, and it also helps us swallow, breathe, and speak. Running underneath the hyoid bone is our trachea, which is the tube at the front of our throat that allows us to breathe. Sitting on top of the trachea are two prominent masses, the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage. These two sections of cartilage protect our vocal cords and change the pitch of our voice when moved. Connecting to these structures are thin muscles. The digastric muscles originate at the bottom of the mastoid process and move forward to insert first into the front of the hyoid bone and then continue to insert on the inside of the mandible or lower jaw. From a front view, the muscles will be very foreshortened and usually only visible when the head is raised. We have two hyoid muscles as well. The sternohyoid originates on the underside of the sternum and the muscle comes straight up to insert into the bottom of the hyoid bone. It sits on either side of the throat cartilages, smoothing out the shape of the throat. The omohyoid originates on the inside of the scapula, near the shoulder. The muscle comes across and then bends up to insert on the side of the hyoid bone, just behind the sternohyoid. The sternocleidomastoid muscles are much thicker and sit on the surface of these other muscles, covering up portions of them. The throat muscles have many functions in the neck. Because the digastric anchors to the mastoid process and acts on the hyoid bone, if it contracts, it will pull the hyoid bone up. This is a function of swallowing, but used in other movements of the neck as well. The throat cartilages are connected to the hyoid, so they will move with it. Because the sterno and omohyoid muscles anchor to the shoulder girdle and act on the hyoid bone, if they contract, they will pull the hyoid bone back down, completing the swallowing action or aiding in other functions. Because the digastric also anchors into the front of the jaw, if the front section contracts, it will help pull the mandible or jawbone down. The sternohyoid will also work in conjunction with the sternocleidomastoid. Since they anchor to the front of the rib cage and act on the neck and the head, if they contract, they will flex the neck pulling the head forward. Now let's find the throat structures on the surface. This line here is the bottom of the mandible or lower jaw. This stair-step shadow running down the center of the neck is the thyroid cartilage on top and the cricoid cartilage below. The thyroid cartilage will be more prominent, and usually more so in male figures, sometimes not being visible in female figures at all. This is why it's often referred to as the Adam's apple. The flat spot above this curving around the neck is the hyoid bone. These thick masses spiraling from behind the ear to the pit of the neck are the sternocleidomastoids, sitting on the surface of the neck. This line coming from under the jaw to the hyoid would be the visible portion of the digastric muscle. The section that connects to the mastoid process isn't usually seen. Coming from the hyoid on either side of the thyroid cartilage would be the sternohyoid muscles, inserting under the sternum. These are rarely visible on the surface since they are very thin and partially hidden under the sternocleidomastoid. The omohyoid can be visible if it's in action. This line here is the omohyoid, as it comes out from underneath the sternocleidomastoid and aims for a point deep in the shoulder. And here are the names of this complex group. Remember all of these points when drawing the throat. Analyze the anatomy on the surface of your reference and draw from observation and memory to help you learn. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to go to drosh.com for more information on these topics and many more. If you want to see more videos like this, 
like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.